Yeah, we'll start with a little set of gauges. Yeah, we'll take a pressure reading here. Friends, this is how my story ends. But let me show you how it begins and how I fix central air conditioning problems for pennies instead of thousands. You'll want to subscribe right now and turn on your notifications to get every step in this adventure. Plus, you'll be able to enjoy my money-saving secrets along the way. This all started when I got a call from Margie. Here, Margie. She's a modern divorce woman that lives next door. She was super hot because her air handler kept freezing up. If you haven't seen that episode, be sure to click on the link we've included. It's only about five minutes, and it'll bring you up to speed on the process I walked you through to get to where we are right now, which is trying to fix a teeny tiny leak that would cost about $500 if I hired somebody to braze it. And I'm going to fix it for about 15 bucks. The mill's behind the camera. Let's get started. Where's my PBR? All right, you ready to do this? Do it, do it. So this leak is so small, Margie only needs to top off a refrigerant about every two and a half years. But it's in a hard place, and to braze it would be expensive. Plus, I've been told the brazing process might cause the problem to travel. Besides, there's hardly any pressure in Margie's system right now, and the leak is so small, I just couldn't believe this can't be patched with some special epoxy or JB Weld. Now, others have tried this unsuccessfully, but I think you'll see that my method takes it to the next level. The products I'm going to use are Bondo Fiberglass Mesh, and this JB Weld, it's the Water Weld version which I was drawn to because it sets up and cures real fast. And number two, it's designed to withstand moisture, water, and various oils, which is important because if refrigerant is leaking out, oil is seeping out with it. And it's that oil that breaks down attempted patches. My ingenious method with JB Water Weld should prevent that. And the fiberglass mesh is what I'm going to use to wrap a bandage of sorts around my doughy patch while it's curing. Something tight that won't expand and it'll give that JB Weld more structure. Keep it from sagging as it sits. My logic is if this doesn't work, then I'll call in a professional who'll no doubt lay me out in lavender for doing this. But at that point, I'll be paying for a pro job, and he can probably fix a couple other things while he's here, too. Now, to cut this off, I didn't want to ruin a perfectly good pocket knife, so I just grabbed a crummy piece of silverware Helen's great-great-grandmother gave her. And I'm pretty sure if you don't have this Rolling Stone edition that's got Stevie Nicks on the cover as your drop cloth, you can't do this. You're pretty much SOL. Now I'm doing a test with a small piece first, so I know what I'm getting into. You just knead it until it's uniform in color and follow the directions about safety protection. And now that I think about it, Stevie Nicks might have been a bad idea. This is sticking to the paper. Probably should have used Motor Trend or a piece of plastic. Look at this stuff. Mm. It's got the texture of saltwater taffy. Mm. But the taste of poison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Do, don't eat this. <laughs> Danger. Do not eat this stuff. Don't put it anywhere near your mouth. All right, let's knead it, not eat it. <laughs> Check out the way Stevie's looking at me. And by the way, big shout out to OC Refrigeration HVAC and Electrical, a great YouTube channel run by a great guy who knows a lot more than I do. Served as the inspiration for this repair, actually. OC made a video that illustrates an attempt to mend a suction line with JB Weld, where aluminum meets copper, I believe, and it was unsuccessful. And now he's a pro and he certainly understands the right way of doing things, but he made the video as an example to teach folks. And I got to tell you, you can always tell when you're dealing with a pro because they take time to talk to the small guys like us. Because he knows we're just trying to save a couple of bucks. 
And it shows a real level of generosity, in my opinion. Plus, it's great to bounce ideas off somebody in another country, like California, where he's from. So thanks, OC. Thanks a lot, man. I hope you'll post a video in return, and feel free to tell me if I'm crazy for trying this, because I appreciate constructive criticism and public humiliation. Now, I'm going to leave this here and let it set for a while. I made a kind of oblong shape so it can wrap the <laughs> oh, oh, pipe down to mill. You have some kind of a sickness, you know that? Yeah, I made an oblong shape so we can wrap around the pipe easier. I'm going to do this little prototype test first before charging right in and glomming it on the pipes inside Margie's air handler. Water weld has a set time of about 25 minutes, so... I'm going to give it a 10 minute head start so when I start mashing it around that pipe, it won't sag and it'll get hard. <laughs> What's the matter with you? It'll get hard real fast. You can feel it stiffening up already, actually. You know, while that's setting up, I'll clean and roughen up this scrap piece of copper pipe for my little test application. You know, obviously that's an older magazine, but I just think it was one of the best editions ever. If you can order a back copy, I'd recommend it highly. She's got a hell of a story. Hell of an artist. She used to have a thing for me. And I'm also going to cut my fiberglass strip to wind around the water weld patch. In doing this, I realize it's impossible to cut it as narrow as I'd like because the weave starts falling apart here. So I'll cut a wider strip, uh, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. And I'm also going to save a couple of individual strands to bind it around the more delicate areas. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. All right, 10 minutes is up, and let's see if this can still be manipulated. Uh, mm -mm, nope. Mm, too stiff. Wow, that sets up fast. Faster than Helen's denture cream. You never know anything around here. After just 10 minutes, too. Good to know. That's why it pays to practice your theory in advance. So I'm going to slice off another piece, and I won't make you watch all this, but this time I'm just going to let it set up for about three minutes. And I put it on a piece of plastic instead of rolling stone. Remind me to cancel that subscription to Mill. It will really let me down on this project. Here we are three minutes later. And while this test may seem boring, it's important to practice with these materials. For example, I learned this stuff sticks to itself. You hear that? On my gloves? Makes it tricky to work with. After the putty, I wrap the fiberglass strands to hold that water weld tight while it cures. And then more JB Weld on top of the Bondo patch. And you can see it's hard to do a neat job. But that's the point of this experiment. So I'm prepared for these obstacles when I get inside that air handler in a minute. Yeah, I let it set for about an hour. And uh, here it is. It's not pretty, but it's solid. I would describe this as firm. I can't even press a finger into it. It's on there tight, and it's hard, so let's apply this to reality, all right? Making room to work inside the air handler required me to loosen a couple of screws, move this rubber grommet from around the piston housing, and pull this small metal panel back a few inches. Carefully, of course. You don't want to mess up the pipes. You can see how much fun it's going to be to reach down in there. I'm also going to take out this small support arm, carefully, mind you. And here's where my grippy gloves come in, and a small socket helps too, because I couldn't fit my whole wrench in this space. And grippy gloves give you superhuman strength. Demel, are you getting this? Yeah. And she's out. I'm cleaning up the surface, and... 
roughing it up real good and being careful not to screw up the braise that's already in place. And in situations like this, even though you're in an uncomfortable position, you want to move slowly and carefully. Don't be in a hurry because you might break something. Yeah, a little patience and good humor goes a long way when you're sweating your ass off. You got to wash off any debris and oils with some soapy water, so I did that, and I rinsed it, toweled it off, and let it dry real good. Now, here comes a thin strand of JB Weld. Been setting up for about three minutes. It's not easy. It likes to stick to your glove, but you can see I'm winding it around the thin capillary tubes and molding it in between there uh, surgically to help me cover the area where I had pinpointed the leak in the previous video. I found this dental mirror on Helen's bedside table, and it helps me see the underside of the area I'm working on. With the delicate areas sealed up, I'm adding to my JB Weld and extended my patch far beyond the location of the leak. Now this strand of fiberglass gets intertwined. I'm crisscrossing it between where the pipes fork off and snugging it up against the putty. If you ever tied a fishing fly, you'll be a natural at this. So there's the foundation of my patch. I'm real worried about these super thin pipes, so I'm going to extend it on this side as well. And then more fiberglass wrap. Another individual strand between the tubes. And let's do a neat job and trim the loose ends. And this is what it looks like before my last layer of JB Weld. This is my final layer now. It looks like a large cocoon extending a good inch on either side of the original leak location. Now all we have to do is let it cure. And even though it cures in one hour, I'm going to give it a couple of days. Two days later, leak sniffer coming into action. And there's a product link for this in the description below. No frantic beeping, even on the most sensitive setting. No leaks detected here. And look it, I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. So now all I need to do is use this set of gauges and recharge the unit to save Margie a fortune. And we'll start by taking a little pressure reading here. <laughs> Don't shoot. It's Merv himself. Uh, Merv himself, the famous YouTube star. What? One of my videos has nearly 37 views. No, I, I really never heard of you. Drop the gauges. Yeah, you better think twice about attempting to refill yourself, folks. Only a licensed and EPA-certified professional should hook up gauges or recharge a refrigerant. But at least I saved the planet by figuring out a way to patch that annoying lake. Hope you learned something from all this. Be sure to leave your flowery praises or brutal gripes in the comments section below. This is Merv, and I'll see you next time. Merv Service Secrets is an ongoing DIY adventure. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to get updates on every chapter in our story. 